There's nothing like telling your friends and family that you're going on a tropical island holiday to make them a little envious. Add into that you'll be traveling on a luxury super yacht. Oh yeah, and you'll be cruising through the Caribbean. And if they're still talking to you, well, they'll probably be thinking this is the holiday that dreams are made of. And they'd be absolutely right. The Caribbean is not a single destination, but an archipelago of more than 7,000 islands, sitting between North and South America. We've jumped aboard Emerald Sakara for the cruise of a lifetime, through some of the Caribbean's ultimate hotspots. From the sky deck, us lucky guests get the chance to mingle as we farewell our departure point of St. John's, the capital and largest city of Antigua and Barbuda. Each day on Emerald Cruises is a new adventure. And our first stop is the historic town of Saint-Pierre, on the island of Martinique. Saint-Pierre seems like a real melting pot of cultures. It is. You have a mix of Europe, you have Africa, obviously, you have India, you have parts of China. And let me get this straight, we are actually in France Absolutely. Right now. When you get off the ship, the first thing that you hear is bonjour. You have the French educational system, you have the French European currency. Yeah. In many ways, we have the best of France, we have the best of the Caribbean. So the best of both worlds. Best of both worlds, and in many ways, best of many worlds. Saint-Pierre was almost wiped off the map in the early 1900s, when a volcanic eruption killed most of its residents and left the town in ruins. Oh wow, walking in here you really get a sense Absolutely. of how grand this theatre is. It is, it is. Why was it so important for them to have a theatre in Saint-Pierre? Basically Saint-Pierre was the capital of Martinique. Mm. Martinique being the capital of the French Caribbean territories. And the French are so attached to culture that they prefer to have a theatre than a stadium. Ah, uh, the French have to have the theatre. Absolutely. As well as its cultural roots, the town has a long history of sugar production. In the 1700s, Martinique was regarded as one of the most productive sugar islands of the Caribbean. And where there's sugar, there's another of the region's most famous exports. The rums of Martinique and Guadeloupe are made from sugarcane juice, not from the molasses. So an extremely sophisticated way of making rum, yeah. not like the original way. Ah, so that's the right. reason it's called agricultural rum. This 500 hectare parcel of land at the foot of Mount Palais was originally a farm producing tobacco and later sugar, until the De Paz distillery was born in the early 1900s. Traditional rum making techniques and the volcanic soil on which the sugar cane grows are believed to be the two secrets to the success of rum de Paz. What are we trying to do? Tea punch or the little punch? The little punch. Lemon, sugar syrup, and the golden rum, which is between 12 to 14 months of age. Oh, that's delicious. Absolutely. That is really, really delicious. When is the best time to have the golden rum? The golden rums and the white rums, generally we have it before the meats. That's the reason it's called an aperitif. Aperitif. And then the aged rum is The aged rums is after a meal. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. You get that vanilla in there a little bit? Absolutely. Oh, it's super smooth. Yeah, it's absolutely smooth. Join Emerald Cruises in the Caribbean or Mediterranean and discover the magic of luxury yacht cruising. All meals, drinks, selected shore excursions and more are included. Secure your unforgettable 2024 to 2026 departure today with super early bird savings from $1,500 per person. Getaway viewers can save an additional $250 per person off the Emerald Cruises Luxury Yacht Cruise Collection. For more information or to request your voucher, visit emeraldcruises.com.au slash getaway offer. Call 1300 390 386 or speak to your travel advisor.
Cruising aboard Emerald Sakara through the Caribbean islands is about as luxurious as a holiday can get. Every day, arriving at new and equally magnificent destinations. Myroo is the smallest inhabited island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, with a population of around 300 people. Myroo, what is the meaning of the word? M-A-Y, yep. as in my. Yep. Roo. R-E-A-U, as in domain, my kingdom. Well, it certainly looks like a kingdom, doesn't it? Yeah, and if you can look out to the sea, we have the, the yachts in the harbour. It's, it's a paradise. It's these kind of locations where Emerald Sakara really comes into its own. At just 110 metres in length, she can navigate us into these smaller islands where the larger ships aren't able to stop. What a beautiful little church. Absolutely. Our church had been built in the early 1930s by a Belgian priest. It's very unique in its structure, architect and style. The outer part of the church has been built by sandstone obtained from around the beach. It's just immaculate. How significant is religion to the island? It's part of our life. It's our culture. It's the way of life. That even as Bob Marley says in his song, you know, who we are, this who is who we are under the sun. Well, we've been exploring the island. The Emerald Cruises crew have been hard at work laying on a lunch spread with this epic location as our backdrop. Not a bad spot for a bum. With the yacht at anchor to tend to back to at any time, the rest of the day is ours to enjoy as we please. Like my fellow guests, I'm settling into this luxury lifestyle just fine. What beauty about the smaller ships, it takes you to places and the big ships will yeah. never take Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So yeah. This is probably one of the best parts to travel on a small yacht. From one dreamy Caribbean island to the next, our next port of call in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the island of Beckway. When you come here, you get a total package. It's the Caribbean that you are looking for because you're not just coming to one island, you're coming to 32 islands and keys. Of course, what's not to love about that? Like many of the islands in the Caribbean, Beckway was subject to centuries of battle for control. Now we are currently at the top of Fort Hamilton. It is a historical site. We were once under the French in the 1700s, and in the 1800s, we changed hands under the British. Today, we are a part of the Commonwealth because we gained All our right. independence from Britain in 1979. As well as its fascinating history, the island also boasts some of the most beautiful beaches in all of the Caribbean. A must-do on your island stopover is a visit to the iconic Jack's Beach Bar. Bekwe is maybe not as popular as some of the other Caribbean islands. Right, is true. it a bit of a hidden gem here? Yes, yeah, still undiscovered on some fronts, and so that's what gives it its cosy atmosphere. Everybody knows everybody here. What do you think is so special about Beckway? The general atmosphere on island. Everybody's warm and friendly. A wooden walkway hugs the coast to take visitors from Princess Margaret Beach into Beckway's main town of Port Elizabeth. Where our luxury yacht awaits our return. As well as a full-time entertainer on board, Emerald Cruises book in local performers along the way to give us guests a true taste of the Caribbean. Welcome back.
back to the Caribbean as we cruise through St. Vincent and the Grenadines with Emerald Cruises. Off ship, the scenery has been nothing short of spectacular. But our surroundings on board are almost as impressive. There's no such thing as a room or cabin aboard Emerald Sakara. These suites, most with step-out balconies, are about as luxurious as accommodation at sea can get. If you're in the mood to splurge, you have a special birthday or an anniversary, or you just want to spoil yourself, then look no further. This right here is the owner's suite. Bigger than some city apartments, and with one of the best views on board. Today's breathtakingly beautiful port of call is Tobago Keys, an archipelago of several uninhabited islands in the southern Grenadines. We're stopping off at Petite Betu. It's the largest of Tobago Keys islands, but is small enough to stroll around in just a few minutes. Are there any other marine parks in the Caribbean? Or it's just yes, kind there of is other. There is one in St. Lucia. There's one in Antigua that's called Devil Park. There's also a small one in Cariacou. But this one is one of the biggest and the best, of course. And nobody's actually allowed to live on the island. No, no right? one is living. It's been protected just for visitors to come and enjoy, see the fishes, swim, snorkel, and have fun. While no one lives here permanently, locals from neighboring islands come in to offer snorkel tours and a smorgasbord of local delicacies. Big Mama, Tobago Keys. This is not a bad spot to have an open kitchen view here. No. <laughs> it's a fabulous spot. Uh, I yes. heard a rumour yeah. we might be having lobster for lunch. Yes, is that yes. true? Yes, fresh lobster. Big Mama, did you know that lobster's my favourite? No. Oh, I thought you might but have I'm been... happy to know that. <laughs> I thought you uh, might have been doing that for me especially. Yes, for you especially. OK, we'll just run with that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm very excited about lunch yeah. today. Thank you, you so will, much. You will enjoy it. Lobster is a local specialty, but with Tobago Keys being a protected marine park, they're sourced on the outer islands of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. With a spread like this, it's not going to be hard for me to make friends in the Tobago Keys. I've got my lobster, I've got my sides, I've got a beer, and I've got this million dollar view right in front of me. Hard to imagine a better lunch scenario. Cheers. It's a feast fit for a Caribbean king. And with surroundings like this, that's exactly how I feel. It's a pretty fun way to do a holiday, yeah. right? I think it ticks so many boxes, doesn't it? Great food, fantastic service, a bit of luxury, well, a lot of luxury, brilliant surroundings, locations like this that it's just fantastic. You can hang back and make use of the toys the Emerald Cruises crew have brought ashore, or head just offshore to the neighbouring island to visit some locals of the underwater kind. Apparently this area is a bit of a turtle sanctuary. To be honest, if I was a turtle, this wouldn't be a bad place to live. While Emerald Sakara is at anchor, guests have the choice to spend their days off ship or on board, taking full advantage of all this luxury yacht has to offer. It's one of the classiest ships on the water, and in a place like the Caribbean, that's saying something. But perhaps its finest feature of all is the marina deck, which opens up when weather allows, so us guests can swim, paddleboard, kayak and sea bob straight off the back of the ship.
After exploring some of the finest islands of St. Vincent and the Grenadines aboard our luxury super yacht, Emerald Sakara, we're headed north to St. Lucia. St. Lucia is one of 13 sovereign nations in the Caribbean, an independent territory with its own government. We are independent since 1979, but we're still part of the British Commonwealth. OK, so it is still a Commonwealth country. Love cricket? We love cricket. I love cricket. Now, what about the language on the island? Are we speaking English, French, Creole? The island is bilingual. We speak English and Creole. Yes. Now, Creole is a mixture of French, African, Spanish, and English grammar. All right, now what kind of Creole phrases can you teach me? What do I need to know in Creole? So if I want to tell you how are you doing, I will say, Sakafet. 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 And then you will respond, I am fine, thank you. Yeah. You say, Moi bien, merci. Moi bien, merci. Moi so bien kind of merci. French. There, That's correct. You That's just got to add a little French. Caribbean you know, swagger to That's it. That's correct. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> the unique surroundings of St. Lucia, with its two dramatic peaks, have been created by the island's volcanic origins. The pitons are actually St. Lucia's landmarks. Yeah. They are lava domes. They were formed as a result of a volcanic eruption. Well, I think I better get one of those photos, right? Should I get my finger up there? You want to try and take one for I me? I can do that for you. All right, let's go. All right, put it a little. All right. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Oh, that's actually really good. It's nice, it's nice. <laughs> it's really nice. Another very special feature of St. Lucia is its many cacao plantations. So cocoa here, it grows very well here on the island because we have this amazing agriculture, this forest right here, because we have a lot of rain. Mm. And it grows very well because of the soil as well. We have that old volcanic soil. Project Chocolat offers a full <laughs> cacao tree to chocolate bar experience. As we learn to graft our own cacao tree ready to be planted and learn the inner workings of where one of our favourite sweets originate. That's good. Beautiful. That's good. Now you have your own cocoa baby. So this here is a cocoa tree. Wow. It produces pods from ground level all over the tree trunk, all over the branches. The cocoa pods this, pretty big. This is the cocoa pod, yes. It gets it comes in different shapes, different sizes. Monique, how much chocolate would you get out of a pod like that? So two pods will give you one standard size chocolate bar. The chocolate made at Project Chocolat is produced oh. in micro batches on site. But rather than just buy a bar, you can make one yourself. Quite a contrast between how hard it is to make chocolate and how easy it is to eat chocolate. To eat, exactly. Yeah. And before you know it, chocolate paste. You have your paste. If you add all the sugar, it will be a 65% dark chocolate. All right, we'll so go 65. So I want you to taste first. Oh, it's bitter. 100% dark chocolate. 100% dark chocolate. OK. Now we'll throw some sugar yeah, in there. This one isn't for production, right? This is my personal, personal yes, chocolate. Yes, yes. I'm a regular Willy Wonka at this point. Right, so you're satisfied with that? I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Here you oh, go. You have yes. your chocolate. Right. Oh, yeah, that's really good. It is, because you made it. I could be a regular chocolatier, couldn't I? Of course. <laughs> St. Lucia is undeniably rich in culture and beauty, but it's the island's natural wonders that it's most famous for. Now, you've got the hot Caribbean sun, and on top of that, we've got the heat coming off this volcanic activity and the sulphur here. Yeah, it's actually, we call it the Hubble Bubble Toil and Trouble area. Oh, I can see the why. Shakespeare. Yeah, definitely. This is extremely, does. extremely hot. This is escaping from the center of the Earth. So right now, you are standing in a potentially active volcano. Oh, jeez. No, that is not going to erupt today. I mean, we are monitoring it very closely. This is no ordinary volcanic sightseeing spot. As well as witnessing the bubbling wonder, we can lather ourselves in therapeutic mud, all within the only drive-in volcano on the planet. So apparently you put the sulfur mud on your skin and it's going to de-age you by about 10 years. Oh, a bit 
more of this and I'll be 18 years of age again, right? <laughs> then it te teaching me Creole, putting mud on my back. We got a real thing going here, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty new to cruising, and to be honest, the thought of those giant cruise ships with thousands of people doesn't really float my boat. But this, this is a whole different ballgame. Small enough that the crew all know your name, big enough you can find a good place to chill out, and the Caribbean is the ultimate backdrop.